Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I got an email from Jeremy Chamberlain. Subject line, New Song of Hosanna, written by President Nelson. Okay, I thought that was kind of interesting. I haven't heard of that before. Hey, Jared, I've been listening to your channel for a while, but I've never heard this before. Check out October 1987 General Conference, Priesthood Session. President Nelson wrote a new song. I don't expect a new video from you right away. Well, good, because as you can see here, I have 2,303 unopened emails and thousands more that I have opened. So I, I just, I, I can't get to them all, but we are doing this one. So congratulations. I don't expect a new video from you right, right away, but I hope this will lead to some digging. I found it very interesting, and I wonder how many times an apostle has shared something like this that they personally wrote not quoted from someone else. Anyways, keep up the good content, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. Now, I have known for a while that we do have some hymns that were written by general authorities. For example, I Believe in Christ. That was written by, right here, Bruce R. McConkie. And then there's also My Redeemer Lives, written by Gordon B. Hinckley. And I want to say, I on the church website, I couldn't find anywhere where you could like have everything listed out by um, writer or text. So I don't know how many others. I want to say that Gordon B. Hinckley maybe have, had written one or two others, I think. I don't know. And possibly even Neil A. Maxwell, but I'm not sure about that. So for those of you that are, you know, music buffs, if you know of any other hymns, feel free to put it in the comments below just so everyone can look at it and um I, I think there's probably some others but i am interested in the fact that it's a hosanna song so <coughs> excuse me so yeah let's go to october 1987 as, as i was looking at this i noticed just by accident in the right uh the right side here that president nelson he spoke he was the first speaker for the women's session. He gave a talk called Lessons from Eve. And then in the priesthood session, he was the first speaker. So I don't know why. I don't know what was going on that year. Uh, at that point, he had been an apostle for three years because he was called and ordained in 1984. I, uh, I compared the two talks and I just noticed a couple quotes that he had in both talks. I'm not going to read them because it's not really pertinent to this video. Although before we talk about the priesthood talk, where and that's the one where he introduces his song, I just I this caught my eye. I just want to read this, I'll do a little tangent. Okay, so in his talk called Lessons from Eve in the women's session, he says, From the rib of Adam, Eve was formed. Interesting to me is the fact that animals fashioned by our creator, such as dogs and cats, have 13 pairs of ribs but the human being has one less with only 12. I presume a, another bone could have been used, but the rib, coming as it does from the side, seems to denote partnership. The rib signifies neither dominion nor subservience, but a lateral relationship as partners, to work and to live side by side. And I know that that's a struggle for toxic people. And... <laughs> Hopefully that's something that you can learn in your lifetime. You cannot dominate in your marriage and it should be equal and decision-making should be done between the two. It should be a collaboration. And it's sad. Some people never le learn this lesson in life, um, but hopefully through the gospel and going to church, they do. And then they put it into practice. But this is really significant is how you treat your spouse, whether you're a man or a woman. I've seen people of both sexes uh, be toxic and dominant and uh, running the show, and that's that's not how marriage is supposed to be. It should be equal, and it should be a collaboration. <clears throat> so anyway, moving on to Keys of the Priesthood, uh, which was his talk that he gave as he started off the, the priesthood session. Um, he divides it up into sections, talking about priesthood keys throughout the ages. The first section is scene one, ancient days. Scene two, the mortal ministry of the Lord. Scene three, modern times. 
I bring that up just so that the next part makes sense. Today, President Ezra Taft Benson active, actively holds every restored key held by all those who have received a dispensation at any time from the beginning of the creation. Surely a sacred moment in my life occurred April 12, 1984, when the First Presidency and members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles laid their hands upon my head. As had been done for others before me, all the keys of the priesthood were conferred. Uh, as, as it is with each member of the Quorum of the Twelve, some keys are not used until called upon by the Lord or as directed by his senior apostle, which of course is the, the president of the church. I feel the weight of responsibility and the burden of timeless trust, which, uh, you know, just wait until 2018 because at that point you're going to be president of the church and it's, it's all going to go to a new level. Continuing, I know these keys have been restored for the last days and for the last time. I'm deep, I'm deeply grateful that we bear the priesthood, each of us foreordained from the foundation of the world for that responsibility. As a symbol of gratitude, I have penned a few lines to be sung as the concluding portion of my message. A verse for each uh, each of these three scenes of human history may summarize my remarks. This song will be new to you. The words have been written, <coughs> excuse me, the words have been written to music from Wales. And here you have the footnote and I guess the name of the the music is Tiddy or T die or tidy a rodeist. And uh, if you want to listen to it, there's this video that I found uh, on Abigail Green's channel. I put, I'll put the link for it in the description below. And it's nice. Uh, it sounds like something that comes from like maybe an Eastern Orthodox church or something like that. It has that kind of feel and mood to it. Uh, but it's nice. I like it. So, that's the name of the music. And then he continues for the gracious support of brother Gerald D. Otley in our male chorus. I express my appreciation to this song. I have assigned an ancient title, Hosanna, the prayerful shout of fervent praise. Now we are going to get all into Hosanna and, you know, because you remember we did a, we did an unusual thing in the April 2020 General Conference, we did a Hosanna shout, which I say that it's unusual because typically Hosanna shouts are done um, at the dedication of temples. It was done at the dedication of the conference center. Uh, they did do a Hosanna shout. Um, I've looked this up before. They did a Hosanna shout for the centennial of the church. And so, but but let me tell you this. <coughs> The Hosanna shout uh, this time was also during a solemn assembly. And for the conference center, I looked it up. I went to that general conference and they did not introduce it as a solemn assembly. You can go to go to uh, the scripture citation index. OK, go to search and then you can search, you know, whatever. Search Hosanna, Hosanna shout. And uh, you'll see that in the year 2000, when it was dedicated, there was no solemn assembly. So this was this was something different in my mind uh, because of that. And because President Nelson pointed out that that this general conference in particular would not only be memorable, but unforgettable. And I still don't think we understand the full impact that it had Um as it relates to the events of the second coming. I really think that. I think there was a reason why he was making a big deal about April 2020 General Conference. So, okay, so, but we'll get into that more in just a minute. Okay, so here are the lyrics. Hosanna, through time's immortal endless stay, in love he guides our way. Beyond the realms of heaven's beam, our great God Elohim. Hosanna to his holy name, our father's God is still the same. That holy night in Bethlehem, his son was born among men to ransom from a timeless grave, each child of God to save. Hosanna to his holy name. Our father's God is still the same. His priesthood power restored to earth to bless each soul given birth. Our song of prayer to him we raise, proclaiming joy and praise. 
Hosanna to his holy name. Our Father's God is still the same. Amen, 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 amen. Okay? And then, and then he, I guess I'll read this. May we be true to the trust he has given us to bear the holy priesthood and hold its sacred, <coughs> sorry, hold its sacred keys. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so this song written by him called Hosanna, uh, I looked, it's not in the hymn book. Uh, I don't know if it'll, and it'll be interesting to see if it ends up in the new hymn book. I guess that's a possibility. Uh, I went to the video of this on YouTube for his talk and for that conference. And as far as I know, there's no video to actually hear this song sung. So, um, but maybe you can search further, uh, farther for it. I don't know. But it's just really interesting that he did this, you know? So he, he did this. Uh, during the early part of his apostleship. And now he actually did a Hosanna shout as president of the church, April, 2020. So let's do this. Let me, let me tell you why I'm interested in Hosanna. And I know a lot of you are already on the same page. Let's go to the scriptures first. So we're in first Thessalonians four uh, verses 16 in 17. Okay, this is talking about, <coughs> sorry, this is talking about the second coming. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Okay, that, that calls to my mind a, a Hosanna shout. I'm not saying that that's what this is referring to. I'm not in a position of authority to say that. If you go to the footnote, uh, it takes you to this. Uh, a cry Okay, a cry of command, a cheer. So I, I don't know. It doesn't say Hosanna shout, but maybe this is yet to be revealed. Maybe this is what we did at the April 2020 General Conference. I don't know. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And uh, that's how the King James reads for verse 17, but I'll read the Joseph Smith translation. Then, then they who are alive shall be caught up together into the clouds with them who remain to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we shall we be ever with the Lord. Okay. So, you know, in other scriptures, it talks about the fact, specifically in Doctrine and Covenants, I, I think in section 88, it talks about the fact that Michael is the one that sounds the trump. And I guess he like initiates uh, the resurrection as far as like the, the morning of the first resurrection the big, it seems like it's a big group event, the way, the way that it reads. I don't know, but so could it be, could it be Michael? He's the one that's giving the shout. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I looked at the, the Institute manual. I checked the scripture citation index to see, um, general authorities that have cited these scriptures and they, there's no clarification. So there's just enigmatically some kind of shout whether it's a Hosanna shout, I don't know. In Psalm 47, verse 5, it says, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. So, I don't know. That sounds kind of similar. The um, heading to this chapter says, The Lord is king over all the earth. Sing praises to his name, for he reigns over all. Don't know if that's like in a millennial sense or just in general. He is the king over the earth, even now, just not politically. So I, I don't know, but you see the same phrase with a shout in this psalm. Additionally, uh, using the scripture citation index and doing a search for Hosanna, uh, there's only a few times in the scriptures that that word comes up. In the New Testament, it comes up in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and John. And in each case, it's talking about 
uh, Palm Sunday and when Christ rode in and uh, they cried Hosanna. Again, it seems like it seems to me that that event was a foreshadowing of the second coming when he comes in power and is recognized by all as the king. Okay, so interesting to note that this first time Hosanna was used. And then after the New Testament, you have uh, the Book of Mormon. The first time is 1 Nephi 11.6. This is when the Spirit is talking to Nephi, and he says, Hosanna to the Lord, the Most High God, for he is God over all the earth. And, you know, you know, you know Nephi's uh, interaction or visit with the Spirit. That, that's what they had to do with. But then in 3 Nephi, <coughs> those are the only other two times these are the only other two scriptures where you see Hosanna in the Book of Mormon. One is in 3rd Nephi 4, after the Gadianton robbers um, had been defeated. It says, Yea, they did cry Hosanna to the Most High God, and they did cry, Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty, the Most High God. Okay? So, in fact, you know what? I should have... Let me pull it up on the church website. Because I want to see uh, the approximate time that this that this took place. Okay, Third Nephi, chapter four. So this was about nineteen, the year nineteen to twenty two, A.D. that they did this Hosanna shout. The Nephi armies defeat the Gadianton robbers. Uh, Gideani is slain, and his successor Zeram. Uh, Zemner Raiha is hanged. The Nephites praise the Lord for their for uh, for their victories. So, not too long before Christ came to them, uh, they did this Hosanna shout. And then, let's go back to the Scripture Citation Index. Then you see it in Third Nephi, eleven, verse seventeen, and. Uh, <coughs> At this point, uh, Christ is actually with them. But in verse 17, it's so I'll do, I'll do verse 16. And when they had all gone forth and had witness for themselves, they did cry out with one accord, saying, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Most High God. And they did fall down at the feet of Jesus and did worship him. So, okay, so let, let's go to that really quick. Third Nephi 11. So chapter four was the year 19, between the years 19 and 22. And then third Nephi, of course, was the year 34. So you have something like 10 years, more or less, uh, in which a, a um, Hosanna shout was given before Christ came. Is it going to be the same with us? It could be. I don't know. You know, we, we did it in 2020, so does that mean that he's going to come in 2030 or 2034? A lot of people feel like he's going to come in 2033 or 2034 because it'd be, you know, exactly like 10 or 2,000 years uh, since the end of his mortal life and his and then the, the resurrection, um, which I don't know. I, I feel like it's going to be sooner, but we'll just have to wait and see. But either way, <coughs> sorry, I'm a little bit sick right now, so... I do apologize. So whatever the case, Hosanna seems to be connected in some way, at least in the scriptures, with him coming as king. So that's why it's exciting. So we have President Nelson that uh, three years, uh, in, well, actually four years into his presidency, he wrote this song called Hosanna. Uh, are we going to see this again? It could be. You know what maybe we'll sing this at the second coming i don't know maybe president nelson has plans for this song uh let's get into the meaning really quick i meant to do this of hosanna hosanna this is in the uh, bible dictionary it means save now the word is taken from psalms 118 25 one of the psalms of the hallel the chanting of this of this psalm was connected uh was connected at the Feast of Tabernacles with the waving of palm branches, hence the use of the word by the multitudes at our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Okay. 
even though that was the time of the Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles is in the fall. It's also known as Sukkot in the Feast of Booths. That's an alternative name for it. But uh, <coughs> so there you go. The Lord's triumph, triumphal entry. Okay. Save now. And when he comes at the second coming, he will be saving now. He's going to be saving the Jews. He's going to save the, the rest of us from all this wickedness that we that we're having to endure. Uh, let's go to guide to the scriptures. It says a little bit more. A word from Hebrew that means please save us and is used in praise and supplication. At the Feast of Tabernacles, which celebrated the Lord's deliverance of Israel into the promised land, people chanted the words of Psalm 118 and waved palm branches. At the Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the multitude cried Hosanna and spread palm branches for, for Jesus to ride on, or ride upon, thus demonstrating their understanding that Jesus was the same Lord who had delivered uh, Israel anciently. These people recognize Christ as the long-awaited Messiah. The word Hosanna has become a celebration of the Messiah in all ages. The Hosanna shout was included in the dedication of the Kirtland Temple and is now part of the dedication of modern temples. I also searched uh, topics and, and questions as well as uh, church history topics. Not that I expected to find it there, but just in case. And that's all we have by way of study helps when it comes to Hosanna. Uh, okay, so just a few more things I want to share with you. <coughs> uh, let's do it like this. So President Nelson, I've shared this before, President Nelson ha has talked a lot about the second coming. And I know that because using the Scripture Citation Index, I've searched all of his talks uh, from the time he first started giving talks in General Conference until now. And I did that for every General Conference, or sorry, for every president of the church. Okay. And uh, I, I have, you know, I'll probably add to this in the future, but right now uh, I've, I've searched the terms second coming, last days, comes again, he returns, millennium, hasten, hastening. So, for example, for second coming, uh, he has had, or he, yeah, he's given 22 talks that include that phrase, second coming, okay? And you can see uh, he's in the number one spot out of all these other presidents of the church. The only one that comes close is Ezra, Ezra Taft Benson with 21. President Nelson is at 22. And so on, here are all, here are all the other uh, phrases and I totaled them up in column I. Okay. And so when you put it all together, uh, don't worry about Jehovah. I was just, I was just searching that. Um, I don't have that included in this total, but you can see that president Nelson, he's in the, in the number one spot with the exception of the first few presidents of the church, but he stands way out when it comes to these phrases having to do with the second coming. All right. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to, I don't know how I hadn't done this yet, but I have this phrase tracker, which is for all speakers at general conference going back to 1942. It's the same thing. It's a tally of the conference talks that include these words and phrases. And uh, I just put on here, Hosanna and hallelujah. And I did check both spellings, and it only shows up in this way with the H at the beginning for hallelujah. So you'll see that Hosanna sticks out, because look at 2023. There's six different talks that included the word Hosanna. And then uh, the next most was in 2020 with four. You go back in time, and you don't see it very much at all, like hardly at all. Just onesies and twosies, and then a lot, a lot of blank space in between years. There's a little uptick right here in 1987 where he, you know, gave this talk that we're talking about. But it's kind of exciting because all of a sudden there's this this spike uh, this year. All right, and then with uh, 
<laughs> excuse me, with Hallelujah, um, there wasn't anything uh, too exciting going on here, but it has been said more frequently, as you can see, uh, within recent times. You don't see it in the 40s or the 50s, one time in the 60s. You don't see it in the 70s. And then from uh, 1984 uh, until present, it, it comes up every every now and again. And I guess you could, you could say especially, well, there's kind of like two clusters. Uh, this one during President Hinckley's time, and then this one uh, between President Monson and President Nelson's time. But anyway... You can see 2023 and 2020, they stand out. And it makes sense because there's been other times that these two years have stood out. Um, we've covered this before in other videos, but here's just another thing. Uh, the use of Hosanna. Uh, they were talking a lot about uh, Palm Sunday in the April 2023 General Conference. So that's probably a big reason why. But just the fact that they were focusing on that so much. Uh, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe it's because we ourselves are going to be doing our version of that when he comes. So 2020 and 2023. By the way, if you want to look at the rest of these on your own, you can in the link of every video or the, in, sorry, <laughs> in the description box of every video, there's a link for my spreadsheets. This spreadsheet is called Timeline Phrase. You see here at the bottom, timeline phrase. So you can come here and look at everything that I found. Uh, or maybe you could do this yourself and look up the words and phrases that interest you. Um, it's been very insightful putting this thing together, believe me. I, you know, I've, I've, I've done many videos based on this spreadsheet. Okay, but, um, oh yeah, and then I wanted to point, point this out. So here's here are the search results for Hosanna. Okay, there's 52 results uh, from present going back to 1942, and uh, in the April 2023 General Conference there was a there was a um, talk that included the word Hosanna. This is by Elder Ronald E. Rasban, Hosanna to the Most High God. So just thought I'd point that out. He brings it up a bunch of times. In his footnote, he references the, the Bible dictionary. Um, it looks like he says Hosanna just a bunch of times in this talk. So, I don't know. Just another, I feel like another evidence that we're really close when we're, you know, placing all this emphasis on things like this, especially in light of how this word is used in the scriptures. I... I hope it means that it's soon. And I think that I think that it means that. Okay, well that's gonna be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.